Hello everybody, good day and welcome to another episode of Web Farm Talk. Today we are here at EE Farms and we are going to talk about tilapia farming. If today happens to be your first day on this channel, please like, subscribe and turn on your notification bell so that you get notified each time we post a new video. Um, and if you are a returning subscriber, we want to say thank you for sticking to our channel. If today happens to be your first day on this channel, welcome. And we want to ask you to please like and subscribe to this channel. Also turn on your notification bell so that you are notified each time we post a new video. If you are interested in learning more about farming, being it animal or crop farming, please stick to this channel. We'll get you informed. Hello, Miss Gifties. It's interesting getting to meet you I'm again. Can you please tell us about your tilapia farm and then what inspired you into it and then um, how long you have been in the tilapia farming business? And just a little more it. So, what inspired us is we're looking for a sustainable way to feed ourselves. I have my partner to feed ourselves, okay. so we just started it backyard. Just something, it was something for the family, something. Mm. But as time went on, the interest for it, the their habits, their everything just inspired us to go the extra mile. So okay. we went full time into fish farming. Okay, so how long will you say you have been in this tilapia business? For the tilapia, we've been in it close to eight years now. Wow. That's interesting. So how did you start? Can you please tell us? That? Okay, so for the tilapia, once uh, we started the um, catfish mm -hmm. farming, we saw the need to include tilapia because um, Ghanaians were not all that um, into, into catfish. catfish. Catfish was seen as a Nigerian delicacy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they were more, Ghanaians were more into tilapia than catfish. So we decided to have a little tilapia alongside and see how it goes okay so um how did you start it how many did you start with and if you can roughly tell us like how much you have now okay so we started with a thousand okay. we started with a thousand just something at home we started with a thousand but right now we we have a lot yes so do you like you said you started it for the family but now you do it commercially yes now we do it commercially okay. now not only for the family but for the whole Ghana for the whole country and beyond. Yes. Can you please take us through the life cycle of um, tilapia, how they grow and then what they thrive on? And... Okay, so for um, tilapia farming is a little bit different from catfish farming. Okay. For tilapia farming, mostly when the, the eggs are matured, the mother tilapia would keep it in its mouth till they are fully mature then it brings them out so when you're looking at commercializing it we go and harvest the eggs from the mouth of the mother mm. then we incubate it then it comes and turns into fries after the incubation period has been completed mm. we get our fries yes okay so how long how do you get to know the mother has eggs and you want okay, to you know, by observation and it's a period just like how women have their cycle. We have mm. number of days that you know at this time, at this point in time, a fully matured female tilapia should be um, producing eggs by now. You just take me from the, the scratch. How um, old it will be before it um, lays egg? Do they lay egg? <laughs> well, typically, yes, they, they, they lay egg. Okay, so they, they release the eggs, yes. Okay. They release the so um, from fingerling, how mature does it become in order to have eggs and then you take it from there? So mostly, basically for a fish to be sexually matured, mm. sexually matured to be able to produce um, or strings or seed or eggs that are viable for production, we are looking at from a year and above. A year? Yes. Wow. Yes, we can go a little below that, but mostly we go from a year and above to be able to determine that this fish is fully matured. We mm. call them the broodstock. Those are the mother, the, the well-matured uh, uh, females and males that are used to, in production. 
So we look at that. Okay. So how you you say by looking at them for you you are used to them so you know how to but how can somebody who is fresh to the system know that this mother or the female is ready has eggs and will have to um continue the process of incubation and all okay, that. Okay, so we, we have something we call the egg collection where we just open basically open the mouth of the fish mm. and you see the eggs. So okay. if you're able to just open up the mouth of the fish, if it is ready, if it is laying eggs, it will be in the mouth. Okay. The eggs will be in the mouth for you to collect if okay. you want to do it. So how long can I, uh, can a, how old can a fish be for me to eat? Okay, for tilapia from mm. four to six months, six months, eight months, you should be able to eat it. It mm. depends on the size you want to eat. We have people that eat lesser sizes mm. than that. So. Based on um, the lifespan and then uh, in order to prevent them from getting extinct, which one would you, um, at which stage would you advise us to feed um, on the tilapia? Okay, so, well, for tilapia, because their production is great, mm -hmm. they can reproduce by themselves okay. and they are not uh, carnivorous where they will eat their own mm -hmm. eggs. So they produce a lot. Okay. That's why people are able to eat the fingerlings, eat the juveniles, because the production is great. Mm -hmm. Unlike catfish where they don't produce under captivity, even if they do, the number is very small mm -hmm. and they equally feed on That's their so. own um, children too. Okay, so I still want to push, push you out as a, a tight canner. So how old do you advise they should be before we ask somebody okay, who is into four, the family? Four months, from less than for four months, then you can start consumption. Okay. Yes. That's great. So um, I want to also ask, um, considering the, when you want to start a tilapia business or tilapia farming, what are the measures you should put in place, being it the housing or something? Like what are the necessary measures you should put in place in order to? Okay, so for tilapia farming, it follows the same suit as um, catfish farming. So mm -hmm. your pond type, um, the you want to use your location your water source mm -hmm. tilapia needs a lot of external sources of oxygen that is a dissolved oxygen unlike other type of fishes mm -hmm. so it means that if you are looking at raising tilapia at home you should be prepared to pr uh, provide your tilapia with an external source of oxygen okay so where your external source of oxygen becomes what so we have machines aerators that we fix in the in the pond that it bubbles up, then introduces oxygen into the water. So that's an external source of. Okay. So I am fresh and know nothing about fish farming. What are the basic major or what are the major things I should have before I can start tilapia farming? Okay. So you should have a pond. You should have your water source. You should have your water checked. If it is okay, the mm. pH, your dissolved oxygen level. If there are other chemicals, other minerals, iron, ammonia. You should have all those things checked mm -hmm. before you start. And if you are a beginner, start small on a small scale. Okay. Uh, I want to ask, if I want to start, do I need an expert? Yes. When you want to start, you need an expert to walk you through the process. Mm -hmm. Be your coach. Coach you through at least your first production. Then once you get the hint of it, then you can pick it up from there. Okay. So um, we know people eat tilapia a lot but is there ready market for me if i want to venture into it yes yes for tilapia there's a lot of market for mm -hmm. it there's a lot of market for it so yeah okay in 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 business wise or so like in selling how much how does the pricing go with tilapia so for tilapia they, they sell it in sizes mm. they sell it in sizes so the every size or the weight the way to determine the size it is going for it ranges from 30 cities 40 cities for a fresh one okay so let's based on your farm here if i want to get let's say a matured tilapia how much should i budget so a kilo a kilo is going for 40 cities okay yeah a kilo you can have two fishes wearing a kilo three fishes wearing a kilo mm -hmm. yeah. Are there any dangers involved in tilapia farming? Any dangers? Yes, tilapia farming, unlike other uh, fish types, 
if you don't take your water management seriously, you could lose all your stock. Mm. Yeah, you could lose all your stock. You know, because tilapia farming, some are the most are done in cage cages. We mm. know what happened when there was an overflow into our dam. That's one of the dangers. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you have to be prepared for times like that. Certain things like that can. If you are in the cage system, if you are using the cage system, if something like that happens, you know that all your stock is going. Mm. If you are doing it at home. You should put in place your external sources of um, oxygen. You should have things to check your water parameters so okay. that you don't encounter any food. Okay, so what are the housing um, kinds involved? Okay, so for the housing types, you either have um, a flow through. A flow through here means that um, there is an inlet that is allowing fresh water to come in mm -hmm. and an outlet that is allowing polluted water to go out 24-7. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that system is on it the whole time. So it makes the water fresh, it increases, it keeps the dissolved oxygen at a certain point mm -hmm. so that your fishes don't lack the needed oxygen for them to strip into mortality. Okay. Yeah. So I want to ask if um, they die out like that, are they edible or is it advisable to eat them? Well, for me, <laughs> I would advise, once you don't know what um, killed them, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't eat it. But if you, you are very sure um, of what killed your fishes and within a, a specific time range, mm -hmm. you're able to determine the specific time which in which they died. Mm -hmm. You know, we have people that do the Kobe's and the things. Mm -hmm. So if you know the specific time, time range that the fish died, mm -hmm. then it's considered edible. Even mm -hmm. if it dies, also. so if you don't know, then you don't advise us. If to. you don't know what exactly killed the fishes, then it's not advisable to go eating it. What could happen if I feed on a fish? Well, it know. could be that they were poisoned. Okay. So you eating it, you are just exposing yourself to mm -hmm. as much risk as they were. Okay. Yeah. So we are advised not to be feeding on fishes we don't know what caused their death. So what are some of the risks involved in fish farming? Can you take us through it? So in fish farming, uh, there, are, there are few risks involved. Mm. In order for you to enter into fish farming, you should have in mind that anything can happen. Mm -hmm. They live in water and your water parameters can change with just the slightest uh, introduction of any foreign material. Mm. And you should be on the guard that you could lose all your stock mm. at a go. So, yeah. Those are some of the, that's one of the risks that is in, you could lose all your stock at a go. If there should be some foreign body in your water that is not noticed quickly. And, yeah. Okay, so basically what are some for basic foreign things, like let's say we have it in the house that we could put them into the water but are not safe for them. Okay, so let's say you have a pond and <laughs> you have a child around and he carries one bucket of salt Let's say your IBC mm. tank and he comes to pour the whole bucket of salt into your pond. Mm. He has basically changed the water parameter mm -hmm. into a salty type of um, environment. The fish is in fresh water and you have just changed the, the water into a, a, a saline mm -hmm. solution, salty water. So they are basically going to die. There will be an exchange of um, liquid because they are no longer comfortable in the water. So they are going to die. Okay. But do tilapia also live in the sea? Well, we have some breeds. We have some breeds okay. that lives in the sea. And we have some breeds that live in the fresh water. So talk of the breeds. What breeds of tilapia do we have? Okay, in Ghana here, uh, the most consumed breed, we have the Nile, we have the Mozambique, and we have the blue, blue tilapia. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So which ones do you have here? We have the Nile and the Mozambique. Okay. So what influenced that um, decision to have the Nile? Well... <laughs> All of the breeds have their different properties, mm -hmm. uh, how fast they grow mm -hmm. and how their offspring are. And their, sometimes you go to the market and people are talking about the color of the fish. They say, okay, if it is black, it's coming from the uh, river. If it is white, then it is from a pond somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So they are all breeds. So the color and the size, how fast they grow and how they thrive. Yes. So are those assumptions true? What it's, is the it's not, it's not always true. Okay. It's not always true about the colors. The colors they assume telling us that they are coming from either the river or um, the pond. Yes. Okay, but are there specific things you can use to identify that this is from a pond and this is from a river? 
something? Well, sometimes, sometimes, based on um, how the their growth is, mm. how their growth is, a, a fish that is living in a natural pond setting like a river mm. will do well than a fish that is caged or is in captivity mm. in a pond setting. You are limited to a, a, a specific area in which you should move. Mm. You don't go around compared to a fish that can move around in the whole river, look for other sorts of planktons and uh, mm -hmm. feet in the water and eat, but with the cage or the uh, the ones we keep in captivity, either the pond, earthen pond, the concrete pond or mm -hmm. the cage system, we keep them at a specific spot mm -hmm. where they are unable to move elsewhere. Okay, mm -hmm. so when we, people who uh, create ponds in the house and then put them in. What are other um, organic materials that they can put into to make sure that the fishes are not um, suffering from any kind of... Okay, so we have um, some certain types of weeds mm. that serves as um, as a protein substitute or supplementary feed okay. for the fishes. So we have azula, we have dark weed. So as they, they serve as another source of feed for the fishes, okay. they are also absorbing a lot of um, bad toxin materials either from the waste of the fishes or from the feed that you are the palleted feed or the extruded feed you are getting. They absorb it, they use it to produce, release oxygen at a certain point in time into the water. Mm. So those feed, uh, those water lilies, the azules and the dark mm. those are the things that you can use to stabilize water. Okay, so how do I get those leaves and those plants? Okay, they are sold mostly, they are so the seeds are sold, you okay. could go and get them. Yeah. Okay, so we saw from the cat vid video that you, you put a um, bitter leaf inside, so does it also work for tilapia as well? Yes, it does. It's, it has antibacterial uh, properties, so antibiotics. So if, as I said, we deal with organic farming, so we try as much as possible not to introduce artificial drugs uh, into our pond. So mm -hmm. naturally, we use um, leaves, neem, we use uh, purple leaves, we use uh, bitter leaves mm -hmm. for treatment. You know, most times during water change, we do treatment. Even if we don't see any form of disease or anything, we do treatment just to keep them okay. Okay, so for tilapia ponds, to how often do you change your water and um, what other hygiene processes do you put in place to make sure that they are safe and then they can thrive very well? For tilapia pond, it's very advisable to have a flow through. Okay. So that the water is fresh every day. So the water is fresh every day. Mm. Yes. So they basically need fresh water like every day. Oh, every okay. time. Okay. How do you get your fingerlings, the tilapia? How do you get them? Do you um, also grow them yourself or you buy them from somewhere else? Okay, so we grow them ourselves sometimes and mm -hmm. other times we get them from other colleagues okay. for the tilapia fingerlings. Okay. So what do they feed on? They feed on the palletal extruded feed that we buy from feed companies that are located in Ghana here, some are located in Ghana. Okay, so are there other feeds that they can feed on? Yes, those are the supplementary feeds. Mm. Dark wheat, azula, yes. Okay, you did mention yes. those ones. Moreover, so um, if I don't have any of those in the house, what else can I subsidize for them? Well, you need to, for tilapia, you need to have their feed for them. Either you are going green or you are giving them the palletized feed. So they are very particular with yeah, their... they are very particular. Oh, okay. So, Miss Gifty, I know you are into catfish farming and also tilapia farming. Which of them will you say is stress-free or which of them will you say is more advisable for somebody coming into the fish farming industry? Well, I would not say any of them is stress-free or is more advisable. It's just that their maintenance are different. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, tilapia needs a lot of care. Mm -hmm. Tilapia needs more care than any type of um, fish, the catfish, comparing to the catfish, mm -hmm. the lapia needs extra care because it needs external, it has a specific um, dissolved oxygen level that it needs to be able mm. to survive at a place you, have, you are keeping it. So if that level falls down, it means it can no longer survive. When you come to the catfish, if, let's say, water parameters changes, they will start to give you indications that something is wrong. Mm. But tilapia, within the second, they, they just die. Oh, <laughs> you see, so you have to, 
do the comparison. This is what I need to be able to sustain a tilapia farm. Mm -hmm. This is what I need to be able to sustain a catfish farm. Am I capable of going to tilapia? Am I capable of going to catfish? Mm -hmm. and choose for yourself. Okay. And then uh, in terms of growth, as compared to catfish, which one grows fast and which one um, has ready market? Okay, compared to tilapia, catfish compared to tilapia, where within a space of six months, a catfish can weigh close to two kg. Mm. But you can't have same for tilapia. It takes a, a longer time to have a bigger size. Okay, yes. so it means that um, then there is more attention to be given to catfish, mm -hmm. eh, tilapia, as compared to catfish. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So still we are comparing with mm -hmm. catfish and then uh, tilapia. Which more is which one is more profitable? Well, they are all profitable depending on your location. Mm. You know, if you are located in an environment where um, you have a lot of people that use catfish as their delicacies, mm. then you're going to hit the profit of it. When you're located in an environment where they are more into tilapia, you are going to hit the also. So it basically depends on your environment. And I learned catfish are healthy. Is is there any proof <laughs> to that? I don't I don't know what they mean by healthy, mm. but. Yes, catfishes contain omega-3 oils that are very good for the system. So if that's what they need, then yes. Okay, and then what of tilapia as well? It has, but the level com as compared to catfish, catfish is higher. Okay. And are they, um, how do you call it, fatty? Like, do they have higher cholesterol and all that no. with tilapia? No. Okay, so you advise that we feed tilapia the more as compared to meats and other stuff. Yeah, fish, good. Eating fish is good. Mm. Lemons a little bit on the meaty side. Let's mm. go fish. <laughs> so, Miss Gifty, apart from uh, catfish farming and then tilapia, what other fishes can we farm and um, or venture into? Okay, so apart from catfish and tilapia, people venture into shrimps. Mm. Yes, that's, that's one thing that people venture into. And we have different, different breeds of catfish, the local ones and the ones that are found in the open okay. river. So, yeah, people okay. farm this. Okay. So, do you have a plan of venturing into shrimp farming? Because I yeah. love shrimp. Yes, yes, yes. We are looking at the sustainability and the plants to set that up. It's I would love to come and see your stream farm because I'm, sure. I have a freak about that. You know? Okay, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. We will invite you over when we do start. Okay. So, um, we would want to know if you train people and then what are the processes involved in training um, people to, into fish farming? Okay, so at EN Fish Farms, we do both online and physical training. Mm -hmm. Online for people that are far away and cannot make it to the farm or the premises. Mm -hmm and some to looking at the cost involved if they should come around mm. so we do online sessions and we do the physical for those that can actually make it okay. so we have the physical one for people to come and have the training okay yes. so if i'm here in person how long will it take me to get um conversant with the fish farming and then get ready for maximum of one week one week okay. i'm taking through all you need to know to be conversant with the fish farm. And how long does it take online to get ready? Online, it takes three days. Three days. Okay. And um, what are the processes one should go through in order to apply for either the online or the physical face-to-face um, -face training? So if you want to uh, apply for the training, you go on our website, www.enfishfarms.com. Mm -hmm. There is a form there for you to fill if you want to take any of our courses. Okay. Once you are able to fill it, it will redirect you to your training platform for you to take your course. Okay. And then physically, would I have to come to the farm? Or yes, what is physically that? you have to come. So we have something we call the on-farm and off-farm. On-farm is you want to come and do your training here. Off-farm, people already have their farms and they want you to come to their farm mm. and come and have the training for them. Sometimes churches have farms, you train some of their members. Institutions, they have farms, you want to train some of their members. So yeah, we do that too. Okay, so roughly one week should get me ready yeah, into starting my own farm. Yes. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. So do you get calls from people entrusting their farm into your hands for you to manage? 
Well, we, we get calls from people to have their farms managed. Mm. But currently, we don't do um, full-time management. Okay. So we go on contract basis. We manage your farm for, let's say, a year. Mm -hmm. Then within that year, you provide us with somebody that we will train. Okay. So after the year, we hand over the farm management to that person that has been trained. Okay. Off. Yeah. okay. And then um, what of the training? The training online and then on field, um, what are the... Um, language aspects you consider when you are doing that? Yeah, so most often than not, we have people coming in because people mostly see on our adverts on Facebook mm -hmm. and all the social media platforms. They will say, oh, like, I've not been to school. Mm -hmm. I'm an English trader. I can't, I can't speak. I can't read the English. Mm -hmm. So how will I participate and understand the online session? Then we tell you, we have local languages that we use. So okay. when you're applying, that's one of the uh, requirements. Uh, requirements. Are you are you conversant with the English? Because at EFA's farm, we are looking at training you for you to understand. Mm -hmm. After you taking the course, we expect that you become a professional because we equip you with the knowledge you need. So you need to really understand what you are learning. So we ask you if you are comfortable with the English. If you are not, then we take you through a language that you understand perfectly. Okay. So we take you through the course in that language so that you wouldn't go to the English version, you go to the local version. Okay. Yeah. But I, I have seen only you since the beginning of the interview. Do you have other teammates that you work with or other people that... Yes, yes. We have other people that we do work with. Okay. Yes. So, um, how would you want to talk about your team? Uh, yes, yes. We For the fish farming, we are actually a crop and fish farm. Oh, okay. Yes. So... For the fish farming, we mm -hmm. have a maximum of five people that they, this include those that do counting, weighing, mm. those that do feeding. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, so aside the fish farming, what I heard you mention crop farming. So, what other, um, what are the crops you farm to? Okay. So we farm um, plantain, cassava, cashew, apples, um, pomegranates. Oh, Most of the exotic fruits, yes. So are your farms here in Winneba or uh, they're outside? Okay. Uh, our crop farm is outside um, Winneba. It's okay. in Sojo. Okay. It's called Kent's Farm. Kent's okay. Farm. Yes. Okay. So um, you, with the fish farming, so do you have other branches elsewhere or you are centered in Winneba alone? We have a branch in Afienya. Okay. And we have a branch in Winneba, yeah. Okay, so do you mind to tell us where the headquarters is? <laughs> the headquarters is in Winneba, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, so this should be older than that at Afienya. And Afienya is older than Winneba, but Winneba has become more, most of the... Uh, the warehouse for a lot of fingerland because we are okay. centered in the central region so it's like we're in the center of all the regions mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. quicker and easier to transport fingerlings to all parts from this location oh okay yeah that's awesome yes. that's awesome so let's say one wants to reach you over contact or whatsapp what number should they get in touch with so if you want to reach us on contact, you can reach us on 246 877 or 50 Okay. Oh, yeah. Any advice for a fresher who wants to join um, fish, um, tilapia fish farming or tilapia farming or um, anybody who just wants to know about tilapia and then um, the measures they should put in place when they want to start and then even uh, when they want to feed self what um, advice would you give people who want to even consider fish for feeding so um there, there is a myth that goes around that oh the ones that are farmed in the rivers are more delicious than the ones mm. in the pond uh, it's a myth and so we all maintain certain management practices so mm -hmm. we should all have a standard so yeah if you want to go for tilapia as a delicacy why not we cared for it with love mm. so it should be on your plate with love and you will enjoy it <laughs> miss gifty um you told us from the previous interview that you are into teaching you are a trained teacher so how do you manage the farming and the teaching in addition well, um, it's quite hectic because mm -hmm. uh, managing um, 
teaching, I have kids too, mm-hmm. and managing the farm and other things. But I've got support from team. my team, so it makes it a little easier. Yeah. That's awesome. It's, it's really nice and um, interesting getting to talk to you and then learn about your farm as well. We are most grateful for your time. You are welcome. It's nice having you put all around. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's really exciting talking to Miss Gifty and then getting to learn about the tilapia farm as well. If you find this information in, um, interesting, please don't forget to subscribe. And moreover, if you are new to this channel, don't look elsewhere. We feed you with more information on farming, being its crop or animal farming. If you've not been able to catch that, please go onto the channel and then watch that. Thank you.